Welcome to the 2021 graduation celebration of the Graduate Division of the School of Arts and Sciences. My name is Beth Wenger, and I'm the school's Associate Dean for Graduate Studies. On behalf of the entire Faculty of Arts and Sciences, it's my pleasure to celebrate this occasion with you, your family members and friends, and all those who have brought you to this day. Today, your diligence and dedication has paid off as we award your hard-earned master's and doctoral degrees. Let me tell you about the program for today's celebration. You will hear from Dean Stephen Fluharty and from this year's invited speaker, Professor Eve Trout Powell. Interspersed between their remarks and my own, there will be brief reflections by three of this year's graduates. These are now former doctoral students who we welcome into our ranks as colleagues and they will offer quick reflections on their experiences sprinkled throughout our virtual graduation. We'll begin with our first newly minted PhD, and then I'll return for more of today's celebration. Hi, everyone. My name is Augusta Atinuke Irele. I'm graduating with my joint PhD from the Departments of Africana Studies and Comparative Literature and Literary Theory. I'd like to start off by congratulating my fellow graduates. Our time at Penn has been tumultuous, to say the least, but it is a huge feat to wrap up graduate school during a time like this. I really do commend us all for pushing through and crossing this finish line. There are a few things I'm reflecting on as I close out my time at Penn. Throughout my graduate journey, I was constantly reminded of the critical stakes of carrying out engaged research. While this has always been true, Recent times have demonstrated how much more important it is to consider the consequences of the work that we carry out on campus and in the communities that we research. In my field, contemporary African studies, it is impossible to ignore what is at stake in the manners in which we conduct our research. Now that we are leaving the university and moving in all kinds of different directions, we are uniquely positioned to continue to push ourselves and our peers to conduct engaged, responsible, and careful work in all sectors. Secondly, I'm leaving with a renewed commitment to community in all its forms and all its iterations. There is absolutely no way I could have completed the PhD without the various groups of people who backed me up and cheered me along. This includes mentors, former colleagues, former classmates, and the new friends I met at Penn. As I move forward into the next phase of my academic career, I definitely aim to retain this community. In my opinion, ideas are best incubated and nurtured by a group of people. I'm grateful for the folks who thought with me over the years, and I'm thankful in advance to those people for sticking around in the years to come. In Nobody Knows My Name, James Baldwin writes, the world is before you and you need not take it or leave it as it was when you came in. It's a line I've loved for a long time for its simplicity and effectiveness. I hope we all take it to heart in whatever we do next. Let's shake some things up. We certainly know there's a need. Congratulations, y'all. We did it. This is the kind of scholar that SAS is sending out into the world, and it makes us very proud. Thank you so much for those remarks. As I speak to you today through my screen, I will confess that when I envision this day, I hope that we could be together in person, and I'd have the pleasure of watching you all walk across the stage in your caps and gowns. But while we cannot gather together as we'd hoped, we will not let that detract from our celebration of your enormous accomplishments. There is no question that the final stretch of your graduate school careers will long be remembered as the time of COVID-19. It's been a time marked by devastating and jarring moments, not only because of the health crisis, but also because of the racial injustice and social and political upheaval that has engulfed us and that we must face head on. 
All of this has exposed the fragility of our society and how much more work we need to do to improve and to heal our communities, our nation, and indeed the broader world. I admit that we are sending you out into a world full of unknowns, but I have watched with amazement as you have innovated, found new solutions to unprecedented challenges and worked to make our society better, safer, and more equitable. Now, don't think that I'm about to tell you that because of what you've endured, that now you're resilient and that you can tackle anything that comes your way. Though as it happens, I really do believe that. But instead, I want to implore you. We need you now more than ever. We desperately require all your creative gifts, your cutting edge research, your path-breaking ideas, your teaching commitments, and your dedication to harnessing all those talents for the social good. You will help us interpret these unsettling times in the context of history. You will find new cures for viruses and diseases, and you will provide new perspectives on the social and economic dynamics that drive our world in both good times and bad. Just as Sonia Sotomayor once said, there are uses to adversity and they don't reveal themselves until tested. Well, you've certainly been tested and we're counting on you to discover novel ways of finding solutions, pioneering technologies that improve lives and innovating strategies that connect us to one another and to the world around us. Everything has been on pause for more than a year, but it won't be forever. So please don't simply be part of getting us back to normal. Push us to seek something better and to aspire to more. On behalf of all the faculty, I want you to know that we are deeply inspired by your fortitude and grace. We are enormously proud of you. And we can't wait to see how you will change our world for the better. And now, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome our Dean. And after he finishes speaking, and before I join you again, we will hear from another one of our brand new PhDs. Now, please welcome the Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences and Thomas S. Gates, Jr., Professor of Psychology, Pharmacology, and Neuroscience, Dean Stephen J. Fluharty. Greetings, and let me join with Dean Wenger in extending my warmest congratulations to all of you, our new graduates. I also salute all of the family members and loved ones who are watching with you and who have stood by and supported you so loyally throughout your studies. I hope that everyone that is viewing is well in these pandemic times. <clears throat> I speak for the entire arts and sciences faculty in saying, and in the most heartfelt way possible, how much we wish we could be celebrating your remarkable accomplishments with you in person and in Philadelphia. You deserve it. The attainment of a PhD is a major life event and deserves full ceremonial fanfare. But the pure joy of your achievement and the new knowledge that you have created also transcend the challenges that the world is experiencing right now. <clears throat> your time at Penn may not have ended the way anyone expected. Who could have ever imagined a Zoom dissertation defense? But there is nothing that can take this happy moment away from you, and I hope you are all finding ways to celebrate. At the same time, the complexity of what the world is facing in the pandemic only underscores how essential the continued evolution of fundamental knowledge in the humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences remains, and therefore just how important your new degree is to our society and to the natural world. Today marks the end of a journey and an adventure that you traveled on with your colleagues and professors at Penn. I know how hard you have worked over so long a time to reach this moment. I was once a Penn PhD student myself and know firsthand what you have experienced. Your faculty members know how hard you've worked 
because they too once logged in all those hours in the field, the library, or the lab. We had our good days and our bad days, but managed to make it to this end. Of course, this is not simply an end, but also a beginning in your elevation to the rank of scholar. Your faculty advisors have taken great pride in mentoring you, just as their advisors did for them when they were graduate students. Knowledge is built slowly over time, and you carry the DNA of centuries of scholars. Many of you will transmit this intellectual heritage still further when you eventually train the next generation of scholars and teachers. You will also understand then how much you have to learn from your graduate students, just as all of you have pushed your mentors to think in new and important ways. In this moment, we look to the future and our hopes for the future of knowledge and teaching. During the Middle Ages, to be a master of the arts meant that one was a master of the seven liberal arts, as they were then known, and could lecture on any text in the curriculum. Now, of course, most faculty who practice the arts of grammar and rhetoric, translated into modern terms, the study of literature and language, would probably have trouble teaching cosmology, and the geometer would be challenged by teaching music. Each one of us continually struggles just to manage the proliferation of knowledge in our own subfields. But as knowledge continues to multiply in the decades to come, your careers will require both highly specialized knowledge and a broad worldview. What you cannot anticipate is where your own career and the future of knowledge will lead you. Each of you has been trained with an expertise in a discipline like chemistry, history, or political science, but the thrill of the career as a scholar comes from always learning, from always being open to new ideas and new ways of extending what you know to be unexplored fields. Here at Penn, physicists have been transformed into biologists, biologists into anthropologists, and anthropologists into filmmakers. So today, even as you think about all that you have accomplished, I hope you too look forward to the future, excited about discovering what you do not know now and accepting the challenge of always learning new things. What you will do and the wisdom you will share will dramatically shape our future in ways we can only imagine now. On behalf of the entire School of Arts and Sciences faculty, let me say how deeply honored and proud we are to welcome today's degree recipients to the community of scholars. Congratulations to you all. My name is Aline Zanardini. I am graduating with a PhD in mathematics and my research area is algebraic geometry, which in simple terms means that I work with geometric objects that can be described by polynomial equations. I was born and raised in Brazil, and I am well aware I am privileged to have made it this far. So I'm very grateful to the many people who helped me get here. I am grateful to Penn for giving me my chance and for preparing me to succeed in my role. And I'm looking forward to give back by playing my small part in the much larger effort of making the mathematical community a more diverse environment. Because I'm also aware that I've been very lucky to have met many amazing mathematicians who happen to be women. I truly believe, as Federico Ardila Mantilla suggests, that we should take as axioms that mathematical talent is distributed equally among different groups irrespective of geographic, demographic, and economic boundaries, and that everyone can have joyful, meaningful, and empowering mathematical experiences. We have been trained to be the teachers and the researchers who will shape the younger minds to be the leaders of the future. So we must keep working hard to provide the means for them to succeed and to excel. We cannot afford the risk of losing young talents. These difficult times have reminded us once more 
that science and research are essential to our prosperity and that we have the potential to rise to the occasion. So let us share our love of science and use our knowledge to spark the same kind of excitement we have in the next generations and in a just way. There's nothing better as graduate dean than listening to these fabulous scholars who are graduating today. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dean Fluharty. It has long been the custom in the graduate division to invite as a guest speaker an especially distinguished member of Penn's Arts and Sciences faculty. These speakers offer an example of the high caliber of scholars that have served as teachers and mentors for our graduates. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor Eve Trout Powell, Christopher H. Brown Distinguished Professor of History and Africana Studies. A member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, Professor Trout Powell is an historian of the modern Middle East, focusing on Egypt, Sudan, and the Ottoman Empire. Her work illuminates questions of race and slavery at the juncture of Arab and African societies. Professor Trout Powell is a recipient of the prestigious MacArthur Award and numerous other fellowships. In addition to her eminence as a scholar, she is also a talented and dedicated teacher who just this spring received the Ira Abrams Award for Distinguished Teaching, the highest teaching award given in the School of Arts and Sciences. She is also deeply devoted to service, having held the position of Associate Dean for Graduate Studies as my predecessor, and she currently serves as President of the Middle East Studies Association. I can think of no better speaker for this graduation than Professor Trout Powell. And after she finishes her remarks, our final graduating doctoral student will share some thoughts. Now, please welcome my colleague, Professor Eve Trout Powell. First of all, congratulations. Against so many odds, you finished, you finished, you finished. You finished in the middle of the COVID pandemic. And I want to especially congratulate you for working through this horrible storm of lockdown, confusion, fear, sickness, and death. Libraries closed, labs limited, and advisors seen as little pictures on your screen. You had to visually share your living circumstances with people you probably would not normally invite to your house, especially if you were, like me, too tired and unmotivated to change the background on your Zoom account. Many of you also confronted visa problems. Many of you fought depression, loneliness, and a lot of global sorrow and darkness. I know that I did, and I've never in my six decades of life so welcomed spring. Years ago, when I was Associate Dean of Graduate Education, I gave many speeches about the monastic structure of master's and doctoral programs. And you all know that once you have finished your exams, your ship may have felt that much more rudderless. But add to that a world completely closed down, colleagues overseas with electricity blackouts, unreliable Wi-Fi in your own home, with the most constant connection being your master's thesis or your dissertation. I can only conclude that this is one of the most hideous years in the last century to complete your graduate work. If you worked with professors who were over 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, I'm sure you've heard from them about the hellish nature of their own graduate experience, especially about stipends, health insurance, and research funding, that it was terrible back in the old days, why we had to walk 10 miles in the snow to get to class. There was no such thing as regular stipends and health insurance, what a luxury. Why we had to scrape and beg to be able to travel to conferences or to archives or libraries. I have the scars to prove it. And as you can probably tell from my voice, I am one of those who used to really indulge in this kind of talk with my own students. This was my litany too. 
hustling, hustling constantly to be a TA, panicking every spring about how I would find funding for the next year, running out of money while overseas on fellowship grants, jealous, deeply jealous of my college friends who were years younger when they launched their careers when I, than I could ever have hoped to have been. And then I got pregnant and my list of issues grew with my belly, professors telling me to hide my pregnancy as if that's possible and then carrying my two-month-old sleepless and ever-crying baby to conferences where job interviews were held, carrying him a month later to different campuses for interviews, and I was lucky to have been able to do that. But the pandemic has taught me a few lessons and a lot of humility, and I want to use these to honor you. I didn't have to raise my baby in the house with my husband while trying to teach or finish my dissertation cramped on top of each other. I could go to the library whenever I wanted. I could celebrate with my friends whenever we had a successful moment, or in the case of my fast friends, because it was Tuesday. I could take a break and travel to see my mom. So I hope that for the rest of your careers, you exploit their suffering and castigate the young with what you endured through 2020. Tell them about how you had to work confined perhaps to a small apartment with roommates you may, might not have been able to stand, <clears throat> or maybe with your parents who got on your last nerves, that you found stamina in yourselves you never knew that you had, that your sense of commitment to your work and your mission was so great that you refused to give up, or even if you momentarily gave up, you found the inner strength to get back to work. And for those of you on the job market this year, one of the worst in modern history, you also didn't give up. And I pray that many of you will be entering a postdoctoral fellowship or an academic job or a job you could not have gotten without your degree. Finally, and with great respect, I would like to honor your work, your hard, honest, good work. Congratulations from the bottom of my heart and may we never, ever, ever have another year like this one, ever. Thank you. I'm Brian Chow, and I earned a Doctor of Philosophy degree in political science, studying great power politics and international security. 2021 marks the 125th anniversary of the political science PhD program. A milestone year is a natural point to reflect on the past and consider the future. Political science has, of course, evolved over the past century and a quarter, but the fundamental concerns of politics today are the same as they were in 1896, the character, practice, and impact of government. As a student, I never forgot this basic fact. Specific topics may rise and fall in popularity with the times, research methodologies may change, engagement with policymakers and the wider world may wax and wane, but a distinguishing feature of the Penn political science experience was its commitment to always ground our theories and our research in the fundamental questions of how government, that is organized political power, can advance human civilization. Such questions may seem intractable in their difficulty and awesome in their scope, but Penn has risen to the challenge. Penn people ask questions that are critical and enduring, not just trivial and fleeting. Penn people study problems that require solutions, not the other way around. This is a distinguishing feature of the Penn political science experience, and it is one whose timeless quality will stand me and my classmates in good stead for the future. The ability to ask the big foundational questions, the ability to combine deep expertise with a holistic appreciation for the human condition. These are the qualities that Penn imbues in its graduates for a lifetime of leadership and service. Aristotle once called the study of politics the overarching science, because without it, we would lose perspective of human society and would be unable to understand ourselves and others. Penn has always held to this fundamental truth and has equipped its graduates with the tools to create new knowledge and to enhance the bounds of human flourishing. Thank you all for celebrating this day with us.
Wow. Thank you to Professor Trout Powell for those inspiring words. And once again, what a pleasure it is to hear the thoughtful reflections of our talented new PhDs. While we wish we could be together with you in person to offer our good wishes, all of us in the Graduate Division and the School of Arts and Sciences send our heartfelt congratulations to our wonderful graduates and new colleagues. Wherever you are, we are celebrating with you. As we close this ceremony, please note that the Graduate Division webpage contains links to a full listing of students receiving degrees by Graduate Group, as well as a student photo gallery. Congratulations, stay safe, and please go celebrate. You deserve it. Thank you.